from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the African Middle East Division. I'm Mary Jane Deeb, Chief of the Division, and I'm delighted to see you all here. Um, this is uh, a very special program. We're bringing back to the library uh, some of the people we love, and Ms. Um, Tambra Stevenson, is one of the people who has done um, a great deal in her life and has uh, contributed in her work to a better understanding of uh, a region for which this, uh, this division is responsible for Africa. And she will share her thoughts and her ideas with you in a moment. Uh, before this, before uh, we get into the meat of the program, I always do a little commercial for this division and uh, highlight the fact that we are responsible for 78 countries in the world. Uh, we're responsible for the whole continent of Africa, Sub-Saharan, North Africa, and the Middle East, and uh, the Hebraic world. So there are three sections. The Hebraic section, which collects from the whole uh, world in Hebrew and Yiddish and Ladino. Uh, the Near East section, which extends to uh, not only the, the Arab world and Turkey and Iran, but also Central Asia and the Caucasus. And uh, as I mentioned, Africa is the whole continent. We collect in the vernacular, we serve people here in this reading room, and we do programs and conferences and, um, and exhibits and um, concerts, sometimes we show films as well. And we invite scholars to come and share with them uh, their research and their work and the work they're doing so that we're all uh, kept up to date with the developments in the region and that we um, help our patrons also um, get a better understanding for the culture uh, for the society, for the history. And today uh, is a case in point. So Ms. Stevenson will be talking about a very important aspect of culture, which is food. And food is not only to, uh, to feed the body, to keep us going, but it has uh, a great many other implications and she will share with us. Our division is also made up of um, researchers, of um, specialists who help the researchers, and they are the ones who are responsible for these programs. And so today, uh, Eve Ferguson, uh, who's a reference librarian in the African section, has organized this program and will introduce the speaker. So Eve. Good afternoon, I'm glad to see you all here today on what promised to be a really horribly rainy day. But as my speaker who will come up has said, when you're on a mission, the weather cooperates and obviously it did, it stopped raining. So what can I say about Tambra Ray Stevenson that I'm not gonna read right now, except to say that she is perhaps the most dynamic young woman I know uh, always comes up with new ideas, always doing something. And when I saw little Wanda, I fell in love with little Wanda. She is a, a wonderfully cute little character based on a wonderfully cute little girl. Um, I'll let my speaker say more about uh, how little Wanda came about. And I just love the mission. And I said, you know, this is something that we need to let the world know about. Well, before I did a flyer or anything, she had tweeted it out to everybody and uh, it went all over and I understand we're on Facebook Live now. Mm -hmm. So I love the way um, the younger generation uses social media to get the word out. You don't necessarily have to be here. Of course, if you're not here, you're not going to get any of the light refreshments that we're gonna serve later. So that can't be Facebook Live, but 
uh, everything else can. And before I read my introduction, I just want to get everybody in here to wish Miss Tambor Ray Stevenson a happy birthday. It's not today, it was about a week and a half ago, but close enough, it's in the month of September. And so, um, happy birthday, Tambra. You know, I know that there are great things ahead for you. Now I'll read her bio. Um, Ms. Stevenson is the 2014 National Geographic Travel of the Year and author of the forthcoming Where's Wanda book series, which creates the first girl character exploring Africa through its foods and female farmers to help heal her community. As founder and CEO of Women Advancing Nutrition, Dietetics, and Agriculture, because Wanda is not just a name, it's an acronym, she supports equitable opportunities for women and girls in, to improve their communities through food and nutrition. As founder of Native Soul Kitchen, she educates, advocates, and advocates for preserving the health of Afri and beauty of African foods through lectures and workshops. And of course, you can learn more about Wanda at IamWanda.org and NativeSoul.com. Um, I know that upcoming Wanda's got uh, lots of exciting trips that she's going on. And so without any further ado, I want to introduce my friend and our repeat defender, not offender, because she defends the health of the African diaspora community. So please welcome Tambra Ray Stevenson. Um, so it's such a great pleasure to be back here at the African and Middle Eastern Reading Room. Um, I definitely see you all as uh, dear friends who enjoy good food um, and also um, history as I do. So I wanna start off with a small video that I uh, actually had prepared um, that kick-started um, Where is Wanda through a crowdfunding campaign um, just to give you a quick preview of how far we've come.
So as um, um, as what has been shared um, since the last time I was here, which was just two and a half years ago, um, I became National Geographic Travel the year of sharing my personal story of uh, really looking at uh, the health issues in the African American community and realizing what can we learn when we go back to what I call the original soul food, African heritage foods, and unlock the secrets um, from those foods. And that was my last presentation um, back just uh, two years ago in 2014 here at the Library of Congress. And so since then, um, between overcoming Ebola, Boko Haram, the presidential elections in Nigeria, I finally made the trek um, this summer to Nigeria, which really prompted me creating Wanda as a way to give back to the community in northern Nigeria, which is heavily impacted by malnutrition right now, um, and also recognizing that we have shared uh, commonalities in the struggle around good nutrition in our communities. It's estimated that more than three billion people um, have low quality diets that impact 18 um, of the sustainable development goals um, listed by the United Nations. So nutrition really is the heart of our economy as well as the health of our community. Um, and so since then, having um, recognize that this double burden is not simply just malnutrition in the form of what we perceive it to be, but it's also in the form of obesity as well. And many countries, including America to Africa and the Middle East, are facing this issue right now. Um, and people are asking the question, well, how do we make ag cool again? How do we inspire young people to go into this sector of food security and ag? And so since then, I had an opportunity to go to the African Union Summit on Food Security and Ag in 2014 um, and, and wrestle with that question question, we had to make a pledge, how were we going to address youth unemployment? And, and I looked within and said, you know, with the issues going on between, um, as, a, as a child, I did not embrace my womanhood, I did not embrace my heritage, I didn't really embrace um, my, my culture, and, and I think that was a survival technique. And I think over time, having gone um, on to become a mother, having gone on to realize that um, yoga retreats helped as well, that everything I needed was already within me. And so from there, that's where I found the source of inspiration of, of creating Wanda um, because of everything led up to that point. So one interesting stat that I, I couldn't believe um, that NCD Free, which is a, a international NGO, um, shared that in 2015 more people uh, died from heart disease, diabetes, which are known as non-communicable diseases, than HIV, TB, and malaria um, combined. And these diseases are all preventable. Um, it's based off lifestyle. It's based off developmental policies that create jobs in the name of fast food chains um, across sub-Saharan Africa and Northern, uh, Northern Africa and the Middle East. Um, and, and how do we harness the potential of the local foods, um, the local women um, and girls to be able to provide um, a better viable option that improves the health and the economic outlook for these communities? And so some of these diseases I've already stated, and the, some of the risk factors I've mentioned as well, such as unhealthy diets, obesity, as well as even gender, which we focus on now with Wanda. So when you Google black women in agriculture, and when you're trying to overcome stereotypes, this is the kind of images that pop up. Um, and I think when we think about people who aspire to go into sports or music. Um, you have characters that are portrayed in a, in a really bright light, right? But when you Google things like agriculture, you don't see positive images. Um, and that really um, reminded me why I choose not to go in this sector, even though I grew up in Oklahoma in a very agricultural state cows across the street, was at an ag town, um, Stillwater, Oklahoma, um, and 
surrounded by livestock and I wanted to get out of there. And, um, and I think a lot of people in the rural, whether you're again in America or Africa, head for the cities thinking life will be better for you, but ultimately um, it is the land that is part of our survival. Um, and so it's taken time for me to recognize that, again, everything being already within me and looking at, well, how do we retell the story through imagery, through narrative? Um, and, and so I looked at these little girls. The first is my daughter, Ruby. And how does my daughter's generation um, have positive role models and images and narratives that inspire them to want to be these food heroes in their community and you know a lot goes to uh, dynamic women like Michelle Obama who's inspired a generation um, and thinking about how do we continue to hold that torch up even after she leaves um, the administration and so um, the other two little girls that I highlight um, is um, Haley Thomas um, who's a vegan chef um, not even a teen, and then we have Michaela Omer who broke this multi-million dollar contract deal with Whole Foods with her grandma's recipe and selling Sweet Bee Lemonade. Um, phenomenal um, little girls, and this is what we need for our communities, healthy food entrepreneurs who are looking within themselves and being that source of inspiration for not only um, their generation, but really adults as well. And so I took time to put this collage together because I asked one friend the question about can we remember anyone before the civil rights movement that was known as a food fighter, a female food fighter for our community. I couldn't come up with anything. Um, and so I realized that it's only until now that we start identifying and start collecting the history and documenting women and food movements and how that's another form of owning your feminine power and being able to uh, turn that narrative of back in the 60s with the whole liberation in 70s that I was that kid who got a congressional nomination for West Point. I wanted to hightail it again out of Oklahoma and I did not see anything related to gender being a positive thing. Um, and so it has taken time to really and therapy <laughs> to really recognize that, um, again, we need new images to inspire us to go blaze trails in a sector that has not um, been in that positive light because home economics, most times we can acknowledge that we thought, you know, who wants to be Susie Homemaker, right? Um, that's not a part of the movement for liberation for women. Um, but I now, being a mom, have realized that is where the power was, is in the kitchen. And realizing that women provide the first foods for the babies, they're the first in the markets, selling the foods, working the farms in many countries, and just owning, again, that intersection of women, food, and power in a dynamic way that wasn't really told before, um, but something that we needed to escape from. But really, that's where the power is again now. And so for me, it's been, how do we share the story of these big Wandas to inspire the little Wandas in, in our community? And so that meant coming up with new imagery. Um, the women you see here are part of Wanda, um, either as a volunteer or a board member representing Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, Eritrea, Jamaica, America. And we need to have, again, new imagery that inspires a new generation. And so that means also providing mentorship and service learning opportunities and being able to create a, a safe space for women um, to be able to be that food shiro that they want to be, that they never thought that they could exchange between geographies, generations, and sectors um, to really help be that source of inspiration for their community. And so this is me and my daughter, Ruby, and I truly believe um, in, in this idea that when you empower women and girls, you nourish the world. Um, and, and the thing is for us to own that power as women again, it becomes really important, a part of that inspiration. And this is my son, Elliot. He didn't really feel that he had a role to play in Wanda. But I had, and a, and a lot of men were asking, well, where's Manda? I was like, what? Manda? What do you mean, Manda? I'm like, 
there go there they go um, like why can't you just embrace Wanda and, and be there for us and so the, the reality is I, I knew that there were, that conversation would come and I simply asked men do you have a mother do you have a daughter do you have a niece do you do you have a loved one who happens to be a female that you believe that if given the opportunity that she could make a difference in her community and and, and when they begin reflecting on that question and realize the, the, the hard labor that their mothers have gone through um, as either single mothers or had to be doing everything, even if they did have a husband, they realize like, wow, yeah, my mom deserved to be more than what she was in her life. And I looked at my own mother doing the same thing. They make sacrifices for us. That's what they do. Um, and I think if we just realize that as men, they become gate openers of opportunities um, and little boys as the same way, I can count the number of stories of men who've already made a difference for Wanda. Um, and so this is a space that, again, we have half of the population in DC alone, let alone the world, are women. And so there is a, a, a strong stat that if you want to overcome poverty um, in the world, you empower the women and the girls to do so. And so everyone has a role in supporting Wanda. So uh, Dangote um, of Dangote Foundation in Nigeria m made a great quote about, I believe the single most important intervention I can support is better nutrition in Nigeria. And that uh, is definitely the truth given the fact that it has some of the, the toughest uh, nutrition challenges right now facing um, the continent and it becomes a really a prized opportunity um, to be that model for everyone else in, in the continent and really the world. And so when we inspire women and girls, it, it means about having stakeholders, people beyond just the gender sector or nutrition sector, but law and media and e economics and investments. Everyone plays a role in creating a new pipeline of opportunity. And Little Wanda really is just that Smokey the Bear, that champion um, who's tooting the horn along the way of making sure that everyone creates the village that surrounds her and supports her um, in, in providing those opportunities. And so in doing so, what we do, we educate, we advocate, and we innovate, meaning that it's not simply enough to provide nutrition education, but nutrition education that speaks to their cultural food ways um, and understanding that those food ways have not been documented um, in a substantial way on the continent. A lot of the nutrition books are coming from America, from India, from the UK. But again, how are we documenting the knowledge of the nutritional value of these foods and making sure that not only are the future nutritionists on the continent is getting that information, but also those who serve the African immigrant community here in the US and in Europe as well. And using technology to fuel that, that, that scale and impact becomes really important. We were just a Microsoft winner just this past weekend and using their artificial intelligence and being able to create instant messaging for people to ask questions related to food resources in their community. It becomes a real key opportunity to see that intersectionality of technology to drive the change that we need. And so in visiting um, Nigeria and, and sharing Little Wanda, I went to Esteem International in Abuja, and the kids are awesome. Ramatu Sani is the head schoolmaster there, and the girls had phenomenal questions from diabetes to gluten-free issues, and wondering can they tune into Little Wanda on Saturday as a cartoon, and it just gave me new ideas about what can we do in, in providing a creative education educational but entertaining narrative for them to use storytelling as a means of educating them in a way that they really grasp the information. It's not simply enough to spit out a lecture, but putting and packaging in a way that has a gender lens, a culture lens is really important and lies at the heart of how we develop our programming for Little Wanda and the Where's Wanda series. 
And so in visiting one of the parents who's a dietitian at the local um, hospital in Abuja, she shared how they're using local foods from cinnamon to garlic to turmeric to clove to tamarind as a means of providing uh, nutritional uh, prescriptions to their patients. And she was saying malnutrition in the pediatric unit is not as high of an issue as diabetes is rising there. And so that was very telling about what needs to happen and in, in shifting our focus and preparing for a healthier workforce, um, tackling NCDs. And so that means how are we preparing the next leaders um, to be able to understand nutrition, whether they're in medicine or pharmacy or whether they are um, community health workers. Everyone needs to be able to embrace nutrition and Little Wanda helps to champion that and make that intersectionality to inspire the next generation. <laughs> And systems changes is key with that. Um, from looking at it from a healthcare lens, we see farm, farmers um, incorporating their food products within the hospitals. Um, we also see that with uh, the cultural lens of needing to make sure that we have the cultural foods available, that it's not enough just to say that we have um, farming, uh, farmers markets, but how are those farmers markets providing uh, foods that are culturally relevant to that community? And everyone plays a role, as I was sharing, in terms of stakeholders, from those in government to those who are family and friends and, and sharing resources among ourselves, but most all, um, I find that is the self-talk that we say to ourselves of saying that, well, Am I able to be that food hero in my community? And what you say to yourself matters in making that first step to creating the change that you need. And so this is uh, the dietitian at the Abuja Hospital that I was referring to. A lot of the hospitals have about three dietitians. Um, they're busy around the clock. They take calls even on their um, cell phones when they're even at home. And so a lot of the information is not documented when they provide patient education. And so that's another opportunity of how do we start creating nutritional educational materials um, that is culturally relevant, that is factoring in their local local food ways, and also the fact that there is a nutrition transition happening in the community with the new soft minerals, which we call soda here, um, and the Indiomi noodles that we call ramen noodles here. All this is also changing the food patterns and also the health outcomes for the community that has to be factored in. And so I had the opportunity to visit one of the IDP camps um, in Abuja, and Moringa was growing in the camp. The, many of the folks are coming from the north where they were farmers um, but had to flee because of Boko Haram. And so in providing, again, educational materials that can benefit Africa and the diaspora, our creative team out of Lagos helped to create um, these inf inf informatic materials such as um, Mama Moringa. I provided the content and they provided the creative design about how do we start talking about the local foods. We call them superfoods here once they come to America, but these are readily available, low cost health options available already in these communities, but they simply may not know the nutritional value of what they have already, already within their own community. And so it becomes really important of how can we start providing that cultural-based nutrition information um, and, and a character that can help provide that, um, that championship that these little foods need, these local foods need. And so these are some of the women um, that Ramatu, our other board member with Wanda, helped to bring together the, it's a coalition of Muslim women who uh, assist with the IDP camp in Abuja. Um, and I had saw a child eating dry ramen noodles and it was pretty alarming as a nutritionist um, to see that and I said, we cannot leave without providing a proper meal. Um, and so we, you know, took some of the funds from the crowdfunding campaign and provided um, a, a meal for everyone. Um, and it was really beautiful down to the jollof rice, to the, the oranges, the bananas, the water um, with chicken and vegetables um, in the meal. And it was a hot proper meal that we also provided um, through a local caterer. And so to me, 
compare it to the plumpy nuts that are provided um, to address severe malnutrition. I acknowledge that that is a, a different status, uh, but if we can do things in a way that helps build the local economy and also um, introduces the local foods, that is a win-win situation for everyone, in my opinion. And so creating healthy eaters um, is the other part that Little Wanda champions. Um, one of the professors out of Nigeria said that the Nigerian soft drinks have been shown to be high in sucrose fructose, which are much higher than the brands in South Africa. And already in South Africa, more than 70% of the population um, is either overweight or obese. And that's really problematic uh, when we think about the projected number of 42 million is to have diabetes um, by 2030 on the continent. So what is the intervention that will happen? Who will be that food shiro in the community to help turn these numbers around? That's the question that we ask. Um, and again, the Trojan horse is in the name of job development, bringing fast food into the countries. Um, case in point, when I was in South Africa last year, the local um, KFC was open for breakfast and they had motorbikes to transport your food um, and they were open um, around the clock. We don't even have that here. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's like a real issue. Um, and so I thought, again, how do we compete in a David Goliath battle um, and really Little Wanda competing in a David Goliath battle between these large um, multinationals um, and, and how can they actually start directing resources in a way that supports the local food economy in a meaningful way? And so again, the education in going to the camps, going to the universities and the schools, uh, meeting with the parents, doing teacher training workshops, um, providing information on millet we have here in Tiger Nuts. Um, they were just very impressed to know like the nutritional value of their local foods, um, to know that they can help tackle different disease states um, and they're low cost and available on the street easily um, just for a few naira. I think that was very powerful for them to be able to recognize it. And millet, one of the, um, it's about, Nigeria is one of the top producers of millet, um, commonly found in northern Nigeria, where you can make the furo de nono, which is a milk millet dish available um, either in the, in the Ruga, which is the village, or also through one of the uh, well-known chains, Habib's Yogurt. Um, it's, it's a very nutritious drink, and when we think about you know, consuming um, this particular um, product, it actually has a, a lot of pre and probiotics. Tiger Nut definitely has prebiotics. Um, and so when we're thinking about the new frontier, such as the micro, um, microflora of the gut, having foods that help provide healthy bacteria in the gut becomes really important, and these two foods help to do that. And so in introducing the story, um, I have a copy of one of the books that we um, had prepared um, in Nigeria, and I just wanted to share um, the opening um, letter that we provide to the Little Wandas. We say the Where's Wanda series is made especially for you. We need superfood sheroes who will help our community heal with our heritage foods, and that's why Little Wanda matters, to find the healing and beauty of African foods to nourish her community. And through her travels in Africa, Little Wanda meets female farmers, also known as Big Wandas, um, who grow and share African heritage foods to feed and heal her people in Africa and the diaspora. And as part of the Wanda's wisdom, we realize that all we need is already within us, and we hope you enjoy the story and share with your family and friends. And most of all, be inspired to celebrate your heritage and learn and prepare the foods. And so with every story, we actually highlight a real female farmer and a little girl. Um, and so we took the journey to Kano, Nigeria, to meet with um, Salaman Tugarba, who runs Wofan, which is the Women Farmers Advancement Network. She is um, by far a great example of what a what a Wanda woman is. Um, she runs a women's cooperative. Um, they make their own made in Nigeria rice. Um, they also produce groundnut oil. They also produce kuli kuli, which is made of groundnut 
think about peanut butter cookies before it had white sugar in it. <laughs> That's what the coolie coolie is. Um, and so um, it was just fascinating and phenomenal to be greeted by just a room, outdoor um, room full of women um, bringing, um, who were happy to first be graduating through a training program that Wolf Fan was having, but also um, unveiling their new rice product that they've been making uh, for Nigeria. Um, and so little Wanda, who I, in this story, I highlight my daughter Ruby, um, part of every story is about how do we take a different woman's story and turn it into a children's book. And so this first story really is about my journey of finding my heritage in Nigeria and being able to capture my story of my grandma having diabetes and my curiosity as a kid wanting to know the answer on how to help heal her. And my father who passed um, coming to my dreams to tell me um, what the secret was, which was everything I needed was already within our heritage. And so I turned that into a storybook. And the idea is that every book hops to a different country, be it either Kenya or Benin or South Africa, and highlight who are those champions on the ground, what are their local foods, and how can they help not only their communities, but really our community, communities everywhere. And so in the first opening, um, we have um, little Wanda, who she's always curious, wanting to know what's going on. And so she eavesdrops because that's what she does, nosy. Um, and she wants to know what's grandma uh, and, or Nana and her mom talking about. And so in designing the characters, I went back and forth with the designer, um, but I wanted to have relatable characters um, that people can say, hey, that looks like my Nana. Um, and it was important for me that little Wanda had a little afro um, with the whole big hair, natural hair movement. Um, and again, realizing that that wasn't something that I easily would have done back in Oklahoma. I would straighten my hair the moment I got off the plane, but embracing, again, all that I already have within. And so the pictures on the back are her uncles, who she later um, goes to visit, and she overhears her mom talking to Nana that she had just came from the hospital and had learned that she has diabetes. And so Wanda didn't know what to do about this. And so she thought about how did we get to this place? And she started to think because she's very cerebral. She was thinking about all the different foods Nana has been eating, down to the soda and down to the cakes and the pastries. And it reminded my grandma. My grandma loved going to Brahms Dairy Store in Oklahoma. And, and every time I knew, she always had some kind of sweet around the house. And she was always offering that to us as well. And at that time, I didn't have a clue about nutrition. I didn't even know it was a field at that time. And so I'm enjoying the sweets just with my Nana because that's what we did together. Not realizing that, you know, perhaps that contributed to her complications of diabetes and her dying later. Um, and, and for me, it was a moment of being able to share um, that through the magic apron that Wanda gets, which is her great Nana's apron that she finds in her trunk, that this becomes her way to travel and to be on a journey and explore how can I find a cure for Nana's diabetes. And so, and, um, so the father actually looks like my dad. Um, and I thought it was really important to have um, the visuals um, that come to mind, like Africa in the backdrop um, versus the princess theme that the designer first wanted. It was like, no. <laughs> um, and, I, and I thought about how important dreams are and how, you know, there's a beautiful um, story over at the American Indian Museum called Little the little boy and the seven grandfathers. And the power of dreams become opportunities of where you actually find the answer. That's when spirit speaks to you. Um, and so it was so important for me to capture that in this story about the power of spirit as another form of communication and as a way to unlock the answer. It wasn't something um, that could happen in the daytime, only unless she's in a meditative state. And so dreaming is kind of like that same meditative state that 
I was capturing through this story um, with the communication that was happening between her late father um, who died um, and talking to her in her dream. And so when she um, puts on her apron, she um, is able to travel to different countries. And so she travels to northern Nigeria, where she is greeted by two gentlemen, Asheru and um, Yusuf, who are real friends of mine who've helped me to travel to Nigeria. Um, and, and I asked them, how do I get the secret for Nana? And, and we go on this journey exploring parts of Africa, parts of Nigeria, and they were like, I know who you need to meet, Big Wanda, who's also known as Mrs. Garba, who I later met this summer. And so through that conversation of being with um, Big Wanda, Little Wanda learns about different foods um, such as millet. And in the book, we actually have characters for all the foods. So in this case, she meets Mamadou millet. And she learns about the power of millet and how to prepare the dish um, in order to feed that to her family. And it was so important that the farmer looked as gorgeous as Mrs. Garba did when I met her. Um, and, in, and contrast the imagery that I showed you when you Google, because again, we want to show empowering images of women embracing their foods and becoming stewards of healing and health and unity that our community needs. And so for me, um, I would want to be like a big Wanda like Mrs. Garba after meeting her. So I just wanted to just end and, and share how important um, it is that we have positive narratives for our children. When I think about um, the characters that we have now, like a Ronald McDonald who um, promotes, uh, yeah, another um, choice of foods, I wanted um, little Wanda to be in that, that dynamic of David and Goliath about, you can get with this or you can get with that, but little Wanda's where it's at. And it's really important that we have characters that represent our children who um, are to be the future uh, food heroes of our communities. And so I just want to thank everyone who's come out. For those who are interested in the actual Where is Wanda book series, um, we will be having those books available online um, and also for November, which is Diabetes Month, is when we'll have another book signing opportunity. Um, so I just want to thank the Library of Congress for having um, Wanda here today. Um, and I'm open for any questions that you may have as well. So now you all kind of see what I mean about uh, being dynamic. But I'm going to jump in front of everybody and then we'll take a couple of questions to ask a question about, I hear little Wanda's going to Sweden. Will she be talking to the Somali uh, community there about some of the Somali um, things that uh, may cure some diseases? So the beauty of Wanda, we're building this really first ever Pan-African Women's Network from Farm to Fork. So we have Wanda board members in Sweden and in Ghana, here in America and other countries. And so we were invited um, once learning about Wanda to come there to um, recognize World Childhood Obesity Day is October 10th. Um, and so it was an opportunity for us to help facilitate a workshop on the migration in the food environment and how does that impact childhood obesity. And so we will be at Uppsala Health Summit um, being able to share the story of Wanda and how do we connect African diasporan women in Europe to this movement and become the champions that our communities need there as well. Okay, um, so can we take some questions? I've got two in the front. Okay, uh, Danae. Oh. Uh, first of all, I, 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 I'm just so thrilled. I, you know, food is a global issue, and mm -hmm. our mind, body, spirit, everything is related to what we put in our bodies. So I'm really proud of the work that you're doing. I have worked in the health food industry and very much want to support your cause as well. I work in the media, and I will definitely be getting the word out of this. One thing I want to mention is my son, I'm so proud of him, he's 17 years old. 
he wants to go into the food industry. He can't go into the food industry unless he's also concerned about nutrition. Mm -hmm. He will be. Um, he actually works at KFC currently. <laughs> he's learning that side of the food business. He's mm -hmm. also working for a family business too, mm -hmm. African American family business. Um, regarding the multinational business like KFC, I know that they can vary their menu. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's important to be advocates and suggesting some meal, you know, uh, you know, selections, etc. Can you just, you know, further expand on that? What you're you doing, kind of doing that area, or. Yeah, um, it, it definitely can happen in both directions. Um, you know, having worked for Commerce uh, Department, recognizing that we want to support local small businesses, and I'm now on the DC Food Policy Council where we're supporting local food economy. Um, it's, it's definitely coming at it both angles on how do we support the small businesses um, in the community that makes up majority of the business in America and really across the world um, and at the same time how do multinationals um, do a better job of providing a, a range of healthier options and many of them are, are having to do that just on a competitive edge. We see what's happening um, with McDonald's right now. Many other shops are being closed and I formerly worked um, there. That was my first job actually in, in, in high school and so because of that um, I I've been able to recognize that we all have to play a role in supporting little Wanda because along her journey she may get tired and she wants to grab something what are healthier options for her along the way um, and so that's everything from big Wanda to big corporation um, they all play a part in her nutritional status for sure yes So, for instance, um, millet, sorghum, they actually are being grown in the Midwest, um, and there are more um, ethnic crops like African Western, uh, African um, vegetables being grown locally as well. So part of it is, yes, number one, how do we cultivate those ethnic crops? Um, USD runs an ethnic crop um, block grant program, um, and those foods are being grown here um, locally in the DMV area. Um, and at the same time, um, those foods are being um, exported out of the continent here as well, um, just packages, superfoods. Um, and so for me, the conversation about ethnic foods, I think taking a visit to Ellis Island is uh, very fascinating because it just shows how foods that seem very exotic at one point um, are so normalized now. Um, and I think that's kind of the frontier we're heading when it comes to African foods. It really is, uh, when we think about just from an economic development lens, what has happened globally, we've gone from um, Latin America to Asia. And so really Africa now is the next frontier over the next 50 years, even documented by the World Economic Forum. So you're going to see that um, that transition happen and more investments in the gastronomic landscape of African foods. Um, and that will be um, reflected in the specialty food market space um, when I go on uh, food show visits. Um, and hopefully, you know, when I see these shows, you know, it's like Italy looks like a food mafia. Um, and hopefully over time, Africa is not the size of Gambia in these food shows and that it does explode um, and that there are more local food entrepreneurs in that space as well. I did want to just add that um, I actually met Tamara walking across a field with a basket full of African vegetables grown in the United States. And uh, she gave me a couple and said, go home and try them. 
like it was what a garden egg yes the, garden mm -hmm. egg and some little Cute kind leaf. of yeah and i went home and cooked them all um they were delicious you can get millet in yes whole foods go to the bulk things you can get your own millet i grew up eating millet in east africa and uh I like to eat it now. So you don't have to wait for it to come install. You just have to seek it out. And um, previously, Tambra had given us some information about the programs that seek to grow African vegetables. I know mm -hmm. they have amaranth. Mm -hmm. Amaranth is a grain. I think they're trying to go grow teff in the United States now, too. Yeah, so there's um, local farmers here, and that's part of Wanda. We try to operate kind of like a talent scout at this point, identifying what Wanda women are out there who are doing dynamic things that really most people don't even know about. We have Gail Taylor, who has a CSA right here in D.C., where she's growing ethnic crops. Um, we have Yao at UDC, who's growing ethnic crops and they're expanding um, what what the work that they're doing as well. You know, I wanted to add one thing, and that is that when you reference the drug companies, that companies like Pfizer and Lilly mm -hmm. are all over Madagascar, in the rainforest, taking the natural medicines that you can find in the rainforest and pulling, identifying their chemical compounds and creating the chemical compound. They are not only clearing out the rainforest in Madagascar, which is a problem for the people who live there and depend on it, but they are creating synthetic versions of what you can get naturally. So people need to do their research about what they're eating. Some people think tofu's great. Tofu is <laughs> genetically modified and highly processed. Um, you really have to do your research on your food. Um, I know, I, I, I see a big Wanda here. Um, there's a big Wanda bag. How many big Wandas are here? That's great. Um, I, I'm going to call myself a big Wanda now because I grow food in my backyard and I eat it. Um, so last night I made something with turmeric root, ginger, lemongrass, and uh, the peppers out of my, and tomatoes out of my garden. Those are some of the things you can do to know where your food comes from because you grew it. So I, I do want to um, give a shout out to um, Lola, who's on our board. Um, she's in the back from um, ACT Accountability, which has been behind the U.S. movement of Bring Back Our Girls. And also um, Miss Africa USA, Frances um, Aduko is here as well, who also is a new um, founder of an NGO empowering girls in Nigeria. Um, and so I just want to thank them for being can here. They stand up? And yeah, can you please stand to be acknowledged? So Nigeria's in the house. <laughs> um, and so um, we were all um, just last week at the United Nations General Assembly meetings um, 
and and so it's so important um, to have um, our generation be a part of the leadership that our community needs and being able to speak out and be a voice um, to the issues because when we look at the issue of intersectionality um, of not just women in America but black women African women um, this the numbers change drastically about health and economic outcomes and so having the voice of those women who are tend to be marginalized um, in the media and in in these larger conversations becomes really important and for me even down to little black girls um, having a voice as well becomes really important of what are their needs. And so that's why Little Wanda is so vitally important to give a positive image for our girls to say, hey, I can be uh, a change maker in my community. Food can be a healing and empowering way to do so. And I'm going to do that with Little Wanda because I am Little Wanda. So thank you so much. And I hope that you join us in the conference room uh, for more conversations and snacks and healthy snacks yes healthy snacks thank you very thank you. much for coming and um you can just make your way to the conference room i'll go around open up the side door and um enjoy some healthy snacks this has been a presentation of the library of congress visit us at loc.gov